yeah, before this, so the logical leap from a uh, forklift business to a uh, yarn store, right? The whole other side of my brain, you know, forklift parts and, you know, keeping books and all that, and then to this. That's what I did, and I think this is what I do, but this is also kind of who I am, you know, at my soul, at my core. So I feel more connected to this. I accidentally started the business in almost 10 years ago with the local quilting guild and, and our spinning and knitting guild was doing a once a month demonstration here at the Walker Ames house down the road. And um, it just kind of evolved into a business from there. It was never a plan. It was just kind of a hobby turned business by accident. And here I am. And I'm a dyer, um, knitter, spinner, weaver, and felter. I teach for free when I'm here. I try to promote the art and craft of knitting and fiber arts in general. They just show up, they have a cozy corner back there with comfortable chairs and, and you just come and sit with us and knit. They can bring their own supplies or they can purchase supplies here, it doesn't matter. You can knit with anything, I'm not um, partial. You can knit with my yarn or somebody else's yarn. The most important thing is that you're knitting. In my dyeing process, I do a lot of layering of colors, you know, and try to make it more like nature. You know, if you look out in nature and look at a tree, you know, and the, you see that it's green, but if you look into the tree, you can see a lot of ranges of colors. So I do a lot of layering of color in my dye process. Like, for example, if you wanted to do a deep dark red, I would probably lay down a gray or a very light black, set that color, and then brighten it up with a real bright red color, which would give you a real deep dark red. But if I laid black and red together, I would end up with purple. So yeah, you set the color and then you can lay more color on top of that. I like to think that I'm in not the primary Crayola box, but the big box of crayon colors, you know, where you have a, a lot of different colors. And I blend my own colors, so I don't repeat colorways. I don't you know, I don't name my colors, I just do a large quantity in a particular color, and then I'm done, and then move on to another color. And I don't really plan it either, just kind of whatever comes out of the dye pot is whatever I'm feeling that day. And it's all wash fast and light fast. Um, what I use is an acid dye for protein fibers. Um, so the mordant is vinegar. It's all very eco-friendly if you're doing it right. The mordant sticks to whatever you're dyeing, and then the dye sticks to the mordant, and you end up with just clear water at the end, which is, you know, just vinegar and water, and you can dispose of it safely. Um, it's very environmentally friendly, so. It is all one piece. There's no cutting or sewing. Sleeves, everything is all one piece. And felting's been around forever, you know, they've thousands and thousands of years, you know, they make yurts out of felt freeform felting, so it's um, three layers. It's actually two layers of silk fabric, and in between is a layer of wool fibers, so it's kind of like mayonnaise in bread, and then it's worked flat on a flat surface using a piece of plastic as a resist so that it doesn't felt closed, because it has to be open so you can get your body in it. And then you get it wet and you agitate it by hand, and what happens is the wool fibers that are in between the silk fabric migrate out through the silk and laminates all three of those layers together into a fabric that won't come undone. It's forever fabric. She taught me to knit when I was seven. Yeah, she was, um, I'm left-handed and seriously left-handed, and she was right-handed and she taught me to knit. So she would teach me and then of course, I would sleep and maybe it would be another week before I would get to see her again. She would teach me again and this would go, this went on for a long, long time. And then I finally got the hang of it. And um, she taught me to knit right-handed. And I didn't even know I was a right-handed knitter until about 12 years ago when I started knitting with friends. I was like, wow, everybody's knitting left-handed like me. And my, my girlfriend said, no, you're knitting right-handed. I was like, wow, I, I had no idea that I had learned how to knit right-handed from my grandma. But um, yeah, she started this, so I pay homage to her. And I hope that she knows that uh, this is what I'm doing and what she taught me. So it's all good.
a cool way to turn a hobby into a job and a livelihood and to share it with others.